Tech companies around the world are prepping for new data legislation that will be enforced in Europe next month, and many are not ready. A report released Wednesday finds that about 60% of businesses are likely to miss the General Data Protection Regulation compliance deadline, and only about 7% of the companies are in full compliance as of today. Now the regulation, it's also known as GDPR, will go into effect on May 25th. So with more on what users can expect, we are joined now by senior reporter at Tech Republic, Dan Patterson. Dan, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. So we have been talking a lot over the last few weeks about the GDPR, and we sort of generally say these are new privacy protections when it comes to your data, but specifically, we really haven't talked specifically about what the regulations are. Can you give us sort of a few points about what it is? Yeah, the yeah. GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, is an EU regulation that was uh, passed in April 2016. It goes into effect May 25th, 2018. And this is designed to, like it says, protect the data of European users. But because the cloud and cloud data isn't on one computer somewhere, it's on many computers in many different regions, this has had a global impact, not just on consumers, but on businesses that host what we call PII, personally identifiable information, like your name, your social security number, your picture, your right. face, that type of information. So this, this regulation, uh, locks down some of that data, at least for EU citizens. Okay, so I presume then, you can correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of the changes will be sort of happening behind the scenes. Like we won't be able to see who's not getting access to our information. But in terms of what I will see, will there be sort of, you know, pop-ups requesting access to my data or asking me to opt out or things along those lines? Correct. I had a long conversation with a gentleman who works at a cloud company the other day, and he said, well, consumers probably won't see much more than those pop-ups, but businesses, and businesses, especially e-commerce companies, uh, social networks, companies that gather your information have been working at this kind of diligently for the last two years because if that pop-up is the only thing that you see, that's a good thing. That means at least for EU citizens and for those of us who interact with EU data servers, we have some sort of knowledge of protection. So you've said a lot of companies have been working for the past couple of years. As I understand it, you know, a lot of these companies, this is part of their business model. This is how they make money, uh, have, giving other companies access to my information. Um, May 25th is the deadline. Is part of the challenge for these companies and part of the reason why a lot of them won't make the May 25th deadline is because, hey, it's part of their business model. And so it's more than just changing some software. They got to rejig a lot of things. For some companies, it has caused a fundamental paradigm shift in how they operate. These are the Equifaxes of the world and other data brokers. But for many companies, uh, it's a lot, the reason is a lot more boring. It is because, well, this is a really complicated piece of legislation and they genuinely want to get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, cloud companies like Box or GoDaddy uh, really see this as liability reducing and legitimately the right thing to do to protect consumer data. Uh, other companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon, they are definitely in compliance and they've been working at compliance for a long time, but that this is kind of a gray area for them in terms of their business model and how they operate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this conversation has come up for us because of the Cambridge Analytica scandal. But I just read uh, an article, it was pretty interesting, uh, ZDNet reported about a company that was scraping um, websites like Facebook, like LinkedIn for publicly accessible information, putting it all together and selling that data. And they either by mistake or by design sort of had put it out on the internet without much protection. It was all in one file, and they were alerted to the fact that it, it, we're talking about, I mean, millions and 48 million profiles that were just out there without protection. Will the GDRP protect us from that sort of stuff? Well, it could protect us. Huh. It certainly will add uh, to European citizens, it will add more protections. Uh, the real scary thing is that there are data brokers. If you remember Equifax, 
most people had no idea that their loans were backed by Equifax, mm -hmm. and that company had very poor data hygiene. They did not protect their data. I love that phrase, data hygiene. Well, it's a good way to think, it's a good metaphor and a good way to think about uh, the things you do to protect yourself and right. to make sure that you're clean and normal. Uh, we want those same things with data because there is a tremendous amount of liability that could pop up if your data is out in the public. Mm -hmm. There are so many data brokers that we are not aware of. This information comes from your loyalty card at CVS mm -hmm. or perhaps your credit card along with your social network data. And as we enter into the age of machine learning, artificial intelligence and facial recognition, your data profile might as well be your social network profile. Mm -hmm. And there are so many harms that could come from your data being unencrypted on the open web or the dark web. So as you keep sort of underlining, the GDRP is a European list of regulations, not um, law here. Correct. But Facebook seems to be at least tweaking some of their stuff on in terms of what's what's happening here in this country because hey, it's an international country. Uh, like he, like Zuckerberg says, it's all about connecting the world. So there's going to be some overlap. Um, so we're going to see some tweaks here. Are they sort of preparing for what they see as possible more regulation on this on the side of the pond, do you think? Yeah, Facebook yeah. would really like to turn the page on the Cambridge Analytica scandal, but they really aren't doing anything that other companies and their competitors aren't doing. And in fact, this isn't a bad thing. Uh, Facebook has diligently been working to become GDPR compliant. What they have been doing in recent days is emphasizing how GDPR compliant they're becoming. They want us to think, hey, we're getting ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. When in fact, most enterprise companies have been working to become GDPR compliant for the last two years. So nothing special here. No. So, you know, how come, we talked about this before too, you know, why the U.S. hasn't jumped on something similar? Why we haven't hammered out some sort of regulations? Do you think American lawmakers are waiting to see how things unfold in Europe to see if it's even something that's going to work? Many cloud providers have uh, told me that this Facebook scandal is the thing that we really needed to take kind of these obtuse laws that no one would really think about into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And so regulators here in the United States are likely working on uh, legislation that will be similar. Mm -hmm. They're also watching what happens with the GDPR and with American companies. The fact is, this is almost precedent setting. Uh, much like a legal precedent, no matter where you are, uh, what the EU is doing impacts companies everywhere. So it's kind of a de facto world regulation. Mm -hmm. Many people do not like that, but other people, especially privacy advocates, see this as an essential first step that should be mirrored by other countries, especially the United States. Yeah, so maybe, even if nothing happens here, we will have some added protection that we never even really requested here in the we U.S. We absolutely will. and. Again, privacy advocates see this as a very good step and something that will at least protect some citizens and make cloud data something that we have the right to say this is my data, not your data. I like that. Dan Patterson, thank you. Great to be here.